What's going on guys? It is your boy Supreme One and welcome back to a brand new episode in my Let's Play series for Star Wars Knight of the Old Republic 2, The Sith Lords. So on the last episode we managed to get the Ebon Hawk back, as you can tell. And we also witnessed our trial um, on Coruscant, which took place quite a while ago now, but it was when we were when we became in exile and when we actually put our saber in this stone thing to get rid of it basically. So we witnessed that and uh, also the council members would like talking about something secret that maybe they should tell me but as we know they never did. So yeah, it seems the uh, Jedi were keeping secrets from me. So hopefully we might uncover what those secrets were at some point. Uh, but in the meantime, I'm just really not sure what to do from here. So let's have a quick look at our journey. So Bayodur has offered to help you construct a lightsaber. You have found a fixture for the energy shell, but you still need an emitter and a lens fixture. So after the lightsaber is built, you'll be able to enhance it with upgrades. But lightsaber upgrades cannot be used in its original creation. Okay. Now this is the main story quest, Lost Jedi. So T3 found a secret holo recording of your trial before the Jedi Council, uh, which I've just been talking about. You also discovered that Atreus had tracked the supposed whereabouts of the other Jedi scattered throughout the galaxy. So according to her files, Master Brook travelled to Dantooine, Master Vash went to Korriban for whatever reason, why you go to the Sith homeworld as a Jedi, I have no clue. But Master Zez Kyle went to Narshadar. And Master Kavar went to Onderon. So there is no telling if any of them are still alive, but there is a chance they know why we were exiled and know more of this Sith threat that pursues us. If you gather them all, maybe you can kill them or convince them to gather on Dantooine. I think I'll be trying to convince them to gather on Dantooine, I think. I'm not going to kill them all because we need answers, you know. So like, killing them would kind of be stupid. So, uh, with that in mind, let's uh, have a quick look at the cockpit, see if it shows us anything. So yeah, I'm definitely interested. We're just in deep space right now. Let's have a look at the galaxy map. Yeah, like um, the previous game, we have our optional planets to travel to. So the planets for this game is uh, Onderon, Narshadar, Dantooine, and Korriban. Uh, Korriban and Dantooine are from the previous game. But Onderon and Narshadar are planets we've never been to. And that is uh, Telos. Of course, got Paragus back here, but I doubt we can travel there. So, um, where are we going to head to? I'm not entirely sure yet. But this is going to be like another type of story time episode like I used to do on the previous game. So we're just going to be having a chat with everyone, I suppose. We also need to have a chat with the Handmaiden because she did decide to join us as well. Well, I suppose we should um, start with Aton as he is right next to us. So let's start with Aton. I don't know what it is, but you look different. It's hard to explain, but it's uh, it's good to see. Um, I feel as if I'm in more touch with the Force than I ever have been. It shows. It's kind of inspiring, to be honest. Anyway, just wanted to mention it. I think the others have noticed it too. Uh, all right. Uh, see if I have any questions for him. All right. What did you want to know? Yes, um, we need to do this because the handmaidens told us that he received a Chani training, so let's ask him about it. Care to explain where you got your Chani training? Huh? What are you talking about? When we entered the Telos Academy, you dropped into an Chani combat stance. Oh, that. Don't tell anyone, but you wouldn't believe how many fights you can prevent by just pretending to know that stuff. I mean, it doesn't compare to wearing a lightsaber, but then again, that doesn't seem to help you much. Yeah, don't change the subject, Aton. Come on. Yeah? So what? I don't ask any dumb questions about your past, despite the fact that it keeps throwing us into life-threatening situations. Wanna know why? I figure if you ever want to tell oh, me come something, on, I don't, don't want to start so an argument. The same respect, all right? Uh, all right, let's try and persuade. I'm not accusing you. I just want to know if you've got any other useful skills. You could be a real asset with combat training. Well, hey, thanks. But you've got the wrong guy. I'm good at shooting people, cracking wise, and pretending to know how to fight with my hands. 
Ray's not really gonna tell us then. All right. What did you want to know? Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't want to play Berserk. Never mind. Okay, so we gained influence, but then we lost influence. Okay, that's pretty interesting. So you got no journey about that as well. All right. So he doesn't really want to talk about his Dachani training, then I suppose. And he's kind of just faking it off as if it's just to look tough, I suppose. All right. Uh, we'll see if we can talk more about that in the future. Um, hey, T3, how you doing? Uh. How's the Ebonhawk? Let's hope he's saying it's good and it's never going to get shot down or destroyed or whatever again. Uh, T3, I really appreciate your help. He's, T3's been good to us, sir. Uh, this game, he's really helped out a lot. Alright, I'll be going now. Okay, we also gained light side points on that. How nice. Um, where oh, this is where HK is. I think we have a new part for him as well. So this looks like the remains... Oh yeah, we've run this before. Okay, right, let's initiate the control cluster. Success, you have installed the droid's control cluster. Let's step away. Alrighty. So you have installed the control cluster in the HK droid on the Evan Hawk. All that remains is the droid chassis and the droid processor. So we only have two parts left and then we should be able to uh, fully repair HK, which is pretty cool. Nice. Uh, speak to Bayoder now, shall we? Hey, General. Are you all right? Uh, what are you talking about? You look like you've been standing too close to one of my shield generators. Uh, you're one to talk. Whoa, claws out today, aren't they? Okay. Um, we're just gonna end the conversation like that. General, need something? Um. Really, you don't have to call me General. Sorry, guess I can't get my head out of the past. I was wondering uh, what you've been doing since the war ended. I moved around for a couple years. Working as a starship mechanic got me from place to place. I wasn't ready to settle down after the war. During my exile, I did the same thing. Then you understand my restlessness. Though the war had ended, I couldn't find peace in anything. As long as I kept moving, I didn't have to think about what happened. Know what I mean? Uh, only too well. Um, so sure you basically did the same I thing. I decided I'd do something constructive. I wanted to make up for the things I'd done in the war. I wanted to design planetary shields, but there weren't many systems with the credits to spare. There was more that needed to be rebuilt than protected. I found out that Telos was going to be the flagship project for the Republic. And it sounded like something good. That probe droid is... That sounds series. so annoying. It deserved a better fate. But Zerka ruined everything. I thought I could force Zerka out... Yeah, Zerka's, uh... But I guess I can't pretty annoying, not gonna lie. Uh, well, I, f I think taking on, uh... Zerka single-handedly might have been only allowed to be a by the way. All I wanted to do was send a message, but I couldn't even do that right. That's the past, though. It's good to be working with you again, General. Something else I can help you with? Um, right, do I have all the lightsaber parts I'll need? Let me see what you have. No, you're still missing any meter matrix and lens. Yeah, Something okay. Else I can help you with? There's two things we're missing. Don't know when the hell we're gonna find them. Uh, what's your opinion about the Telo situation? If the Republic would just rein Zerka in, there'd be no problem. But as long as Zerka is allowed to undermine the Athorian's efforts, Telos will remain dead. I can't take Zerka is very annoying. Used by those blood suckers. But there's nothing I can do about it, so let's talk about something else. Something else I can help you with? Uh, where did you pick up that remote anyway? It sounds very annoying. That old thing? I built him when I was a kid. Been following me around for years now. This pipe would have done to try and chase him off. Hey, just kidding. I'm happy to have you around. Uh. What does it do, other than following you around? He helps me out with repairs. I outfitted him with a cutting laser and some other tools for delicate modifications. He's also good for singeing the pants of annoying techs. <laughs> okay. I've been thinking about doing some other work on him, but I barely have time. Too busy fixing up the ship. Something else I can help you with? Um... Oh, I asked him this. I don't, I don't know. Uh, how did you lose your arm, anyway? 
I got tired of it. Kept dropping my hydro spanner. Figured I'd get a new one. Ah, right. Uh, yeah, I'll bet that was fun. I was only kidding. Actually, it was a souvenir from Malakor. I was lucky it was all I lost. But at least it gave me something to do, right? Everyone always said I was probably half machine anyway. Something else I can help you with. Uh, okay, uh, what, what are you doing? Just working on the ship. I'm yeah, not good. sure who got her up and running, but I'm amazed she's even space worthy. We're yeah, me too. You should have sent her at the start of this freaking game. But don't worry, I'll get everything in shape. That's good to know. Alright, okay, it's fun chatting with you, Bayo, dear. Um, you're gonna have a chat with next. I, I believe Dan Maiden's uh, in here, so you should probably have a chat with her first. Well, next, not first at all. Oh, welcome, Exile. Is there something you need? Are you all right? Yes. Your features, your stance. There is a calm about you that I did not notice on Telos. What do you mean? There is an energy about you, a lightness in your movements. It is something I have seen in only the most disciplined and revered of the Ichani Weapon Masters. Yet it comes to you with ease. I do feel better. I feel more in touch with my surroundings and others. It shows in your features. It is beautiful to see. Can I ask you some questions? You may ask. Uh, alright, let's go for here. Did Atris ever mention me? She said you betrayed the Jedi by going to war when it was forbidden to you. You turned on your masters, your teachings, and yourself. Uh, she's exaggerating. That is not all she says. She says you know nothing of loyalty to any cause except your own animal instincts. And she told us why you fell to the dark side. Uh, but what dark side? Atris says that you fell to the dark side in the Mandalorian Wars when you gave in to your lust for battle. Once you tasted war, you could not give it up. Uh... Well, if that were the case, I would have fought in the Jedi Civil War. Atris says when the Dark Lord Revan returned to the Republic, you did not march with them, because you had fallen so far you could no longer feel the Force. Uh, no. Um... That is untrue, but Atris is entitled to her opinion, I suppose. I believe that is the extent of her expressed feelings toward you. There are variations at times, but all rise from the same foundation. Express feelings? Yes, it is difficult sometimes for others to truly speak their heart or listen to it. The words often prove difficult, or they do not come at all. What do you think Atris's heart says? Without having seen you and Atris fight, I cannot say. Battle is a pure form of expression. It is heart and discipline, reduced to movement and motion. Uh, so if I fought Atris, then the truth might, truth might come out? Perhaps it may prove truer than conversing with words. In battle, the words are swept away, giving way to actions. Mercy, sacrifice, anger, fear. These are pure moments of expression. Okay, uh, I had other questions. You may ask. Uh, why do you look different than your sisters? I honor the face of my mother. It is not something usually spoken of in the company of others. So you have a different mother, but same father? I do not wish to discuss it. If there is something else you wish to ask, you may do so. I apologize, I meant no offense. There is no need to apologize. You were merely remarking on something that you saw. There is no wrong in that. Is it a sensitive subject? It is not a sensitive subject, but a subject that requires trust. There is no such trust between you and I, and such trust takes time. Okay. You may ask. Um, do you have a name? Before entering Atris's service, yes. I carried a name, as all the children of the Ichani do. What was it? It is not important. My title and rank is of consequence, not my name. I take value in Atris's service, not in myself. 
Uh, you should take value in yourself as well. We all have value in our oaths to others, and the promises we make. When we make that pledge, we are pledging ourselves to something greater. When importance is placed on the self, then by such acts the galaxy is unmade. Do you think that I lost myself when I disobeyed the Jedi? I do not know. That is a question you must ask yourself. Um... Well, right now the only question I'm asking myself is why I'm letting you stay. I meant no offense, but the question remains. If the question angers you, oftentimes there is a reason for such anger. Okay. Uh, other questions we got. Um, what are you doing? I am training, so that if danger should strike, my body and my reflexes will be prepared. That, and I had forgotten how long hyperspace travel can be. If I do not have something to focus oh, on... Oh, not really hyperspace travel at the moment, we're just in well. space, we aren't going anywhere. Um, I mean, you could always play Bazaar without them. What do you mean, Bazaar? What, again? <laughs> <laughs> no, I do That's not That's funny. Them. Um, what, a card? That too. I don't think anyone here trusts each other at this point. That is untrue. You and the Iridonian trust each other. Or at least the Iridonian. Yeah, that's pretty much it. See. It's just me and Baudur. Much of the Iridonian when we served Atris. Right. Atris believed uh. that the Iridonian held the knowledge to restoring Telos. Hey, Baudur. Yes. His skill with machines is something beyond which most can aspire to. His shield technology surpasses the designs of even the most skilled of Ichani power architects. I do not realize if you know what it means to have such a one respect and follow you. The Iridonian allied himself with no one on the entire world of Telos, yet he will follow you at the risk of his life. His stance, in many ways, mirrors yours. Where he walks, he carries a world upon his shoulders. And like you, I do not know if he has ever faced it. Um, well maybe you'd like to explain why Atrus is siphoning power to the Telos Academy. The reasons for such siphoning of power are complicated, and I do not know all the answers. But there is something greater being achieved. The teachings at the Academy must be preserved, even if it draws strength from Telos. Atrus fought by Odur was the key to saving Telos? Yes. His skill with machines is something beyond which most can aspire to. His shield she, technology she this surpasses already. the designs of even the most skilled of Ichani power architects. I do not realize if you know what it means to have such yeah, a... Yeah, she's had that before. In yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we're just going back to freaking uh, this. Uh, I don't want to talk about it, and I don't want you asking him about it either. I will respect your wishes, and his. Forgive me. Don't apologize, it was a long time ago. It does not sound like it is in the past, but I shall respect your wishes. <laughs> That's everything I can uh, speak to her about. Uh, can you teach me some fighting moves? Training is something reserved for certain cast members of the Achani, but I do not see the harm in instructing you in some basic principles. I do not understand. I, mean, I did get my ass whooped by five of your sisters. <laughs> children are raised on warfare. Um, I'm not a child. All Ichani fighting principles rely on foundations. If one does not understand the most basic of fighting moves, it is not possible to understand the higher tiers. It is similar to learning the alphabet of a language before being able to use words, then sentences. Um. All right, I'm ready. As a foundation, I will instruct you in our elementary movements. The body itself is the first weapon you must master. It is not something that can be described. Let us duel, you and I, and that shall teach you more than my words can. Use only your okay. hands and feet to strike at me, nothing else, or our combat shall be over. So only hands Do not like resort to using any items or any force techniques you may possess. Such things will obstruct learning. Uh... Try yourself then. Very well. I shall match my movements to resist your efforts. And do not hold back, or I will hurt you. Oh, we shall see. Oh, oh, look. Oh, hello. <laughs> oh, dear. 
Oh, this looks nice, doesn't it? Uh, I'll shut up now. <laughs> right. Let's spa, shall we? Oh, you haven't laid a finger on me. That's the only damage you've done. I've almost got your HP down. There we go. You fought well indeed. You have caught the principles of the style by watching and anticipating my movements. I now have a favor to ask you. A favor? The weapon the Jedi use, the Force, I would like to know more about it. What do you want to know? It is not something you can see or fight, yet the Jedi use it and struggle with it their entire lives. It's a difficult thing to, to uh, describe. Please, I wish to know. Ooh, there's a lot of ones to go for here, isn't there? I'm off the sun, got the glare. Oh, I don't know. I think the first one's nice. Uh, imagine awakening and hearing the heartbeat of the galaxy for the first time. I see. Thank you, Exile. I appreciate you sharing your knowledge with me. Uh, if you have any further questions in the future, seek me out and ask then. Okay, so we gained some influence with her. Uh, is she, are you going to put some clothes on or are you just going to stay like that? <laughs> I'll leave her be for now, I suppose. Um, Alright, we're going to speak to Kraya. I want to put my clothes on. I don't want to be like half naked in front of Kraya. I was bad enough on freaking Baragus. Right, here's the old witch. Let's uh, have a chat with her, shall we? How many more do we intend to get? Uh, of to course, she's back moaning. This ship is not the galaxy. There is only so much room. Bro, you are the one who wanted freaking the handmaiden to come. What are you chatting? Uh, as many as want to uh, to come and help us. Then prepare for an army, I think, for it seems many more will come in time. Well, that's a good thing, isn't it? You because you are a leader. Their kind always needs such, even when the figure deserves no such obedience. Um, they're my friends, not my followers. Do not cloak one word within another. <laughs> friends. Do friends not follow? Do friends not form a hierarchy of their own, no matter how small the circle? Uh, they are your friends too. And oh, that might be on there. Maybe you can learn from, uh, learn to see them that way, rather than as followers. I am too old for friends. And when the years yeah, settle upon you, bitch. you will dispense with such words as well. Uh, what makes you think they obey me? Because I am not blind, that is why. I see well, I can't see your eyes, then. Hear their voices when they speak to you, and notice the change when they speak to others. Yeah, because you probably fucking go in their mind, then. Why are you angry? I know many things, and I know what I am not. I am no leader. I speak with a voice that will never move others. I speak with a passion that goes unheard. They obey you because you are a leader, and perhaps something more. Have you noticed what has been happening? Have you felt it in them? No. What? They echo you, either fighting or surrendering to their feelings, their loyalty, their duty. Your mere presence serves as an example to them of something to uphold or something to fight against. Watch them carefully, see their patterns, and recognize the strength in it. Influence can be a weapon, one that you may need before your journey is done. They are my friends, not tools. I care not which of the words you use, as long as you make use of that which you forge. That was Revan's way, I believe. It was a strength. What do you mean? A discussion, perhaps, for another time. Okay, then. Ask, See if I have uh, I any other questions. Probably do. Yeah, I got a lot of them, don't I? Uh, oh boy, that's a lot. Uh, what's wrong with your eyes? There is nothing wrong with my sight, if that is your question. I see all that I need. Though the seeing of things flesh and blood has failed me some time ago, they were distractions only. I mean, there might be a way to heal your sight. There is nothing wrong with my eyes. They simply have atrophied from use. They are adequate to distinguish shapes, silhouettes. If need be, I could heal them, restore my sight. But sight can prove a distraction. When one relies so on you, sight to you perceive want the to world, stay blind. it is like trying to stare at the galaxy through a crack in the door. But that is a lesson for another time. 
you must learn to see crude matter for what it is before the veil is lifted. Um, Ask. okay. Kraya, what are you? A Jedi? A Sith? Does it matter? Of course it does. Such titles allow you to break the galaxy into light and dark. Categorize it. Perhaps I am neither. And I hold both as what they are, pieces of a whole. Know that I am your teacher, and that is enough. Tried to do intelligence. Then what were you? What do you wish to hear? That I once believed in the Code of the Jedi? That I felt the call of the Sith? That perhaps once I held the galaxy by its throat? That for every good work that I did, I brought equal harm upon the galaxy? That perhaps what the greatest of the Sith Lords knew of evil they learned from me? What would it matter now? There is only so much comfort in knowing such things, and it is not who I am now. Uh, I still wish to hear the story. Oh, what's happening now? This is new. I have never seen this before. There are dark places in the galaxy where few tread. Ancient centers of learning, of knowledge, but I did not walk alone. To be united by hatred is a fragile alliance at best. What is happening? But my will was not law. There were disagreements. It's uh whoa and hunger for power. She she was a Sith. Oh wow. There are techniques within the force against which there is no defense. There we go, that's fails. Jesus! Oh, this is brutal! I was cast down, stripped of my power, exiled. I so she was exiled like us? And fell into darkness. That I've never seen that before. That was insane. So that was uh, from me, my mistakes, my silent. and use that knowledge to become greater than I. That is all I ask of you, and that is all I desire. In you, all my hopes rest for the future, for the Force. Uh, I need more than that, Kraya. If it means so much to you, then this I swear to you upon my life, upon our lives, that when your training is complete, I will answer everything. There shall be no more shadows between us, only truth that exists between master and apprentice. Okay. That was so cool. Uh, um. Right. So, do you know anything about the Sith who pursue us? Nothing more than we already know. And anything else I yeah, we've, useless. She said there that, is danger uh, in such knowledge. Before. Even if I was certain of the ones who well back. You. Um, should I ask more questions? I don't... Yeah, uh, sure. Um, did you know Raven? I misspoke before, and I do not wish to choose my words unwisely again. Leave this be. Oh, okay. Uh, See if we can ask anything else. Uh, did you know Atris at all? I know her as much as I know any Jedi. If you have other questions, you may ask those, but on Atris, I can provide you no answers that you cannot find on your own. She's not going to tell us much anymore now, is she? Uh, I had questions about how Revan amassed such a huge force against the Republic. A discussion, perhaps. Alright, uh, I'll be going now then. So I take it she's not going to tell us anymore. That was really interesting. So Kraya was a Sith? And she was exiled. So like us being a Jedi being exiled, she was a Sith but exiled, I, I think. 
Like, like I said, I've never fully completed this game before, and I've never seen that before, so that was really interesting. There are three things I have no clue about this game, like, man. Okay, so with that in mind, guys, I think I am going to end this episode off here. So this was a nice story time to have a chat with everyone, especially Kreia, that was really interesting. So I think, uh, next episode, we're going to be choosing what planet we're going to go to I suppose and we'll go from there so guys if you did enjoy this episode make sure to leave a like make sure to subscribe and I will see you next time